for a couple of months, I was trying to improve a methodology that we use here at USP and in other universities, of course, to detect uh, protozoa in water. So I will share my results now and hopefully we will like it because I think we have good news. So this method, it's based in this manual, method 1623.1 from the US EPA called Cryptosporidium and Giardia in Water by Filtration, IMS and FA. Basically, the method um, uh, recommended a membrane filtration to concentrate the sample, followed by an immunomagnetic separation, and then immunofluorescence. And in the end of the process, you sh if you've done everything right, you should be able to see something like this. Here we have Giardia, and here we have Cryptosporidium. However, I mean, this method is easy PC, is, uh, it's a uh, fast method, and it's good to develop, and is easy to see, so you don't need a trained eye or nothing like that, but it's quite expensive. And uh, I think one, uh, one the goal of the project is try to reduce costs, not only in the field, but also in the laboratory and the universities, because the methods need to be reproduced in uh, uh, many places as can be. And if it's an expensive method, maybe some universities or some researchers can do it. So we need to improve and we need to try to reduce cost. Uh, and telling about costs, we use kits for IMS, immunomagnetic separation, and for immunofluorescence. And both kits are enough to 50 reactions, only 50 reactions. And here I have the costs. The Dynabits kit for IMS costs something about $3,800. And the Medifluor for immunofluorescence is something about nine. nine almost thousand dollars. So this is the price for each sample. So in the end, one sample cost $95. This is too much, at least for us here in Brazil, and I think for almost everybody. So the main goal of this, all this thing here is reduce cost of the detection technique without losing quality. So uh, everything that I did during this couple of months, I did based again on the method, the same method. So I followed the same protocol and I did some changes only to check the results. So I compare, I used well water from here and this is our change, challenge water with kaolinite and humic acid. So we have 40 of turbidity and 250 for true color. And I inoculate these samples with 700 cc of Giardia and 700 cc of Cryptosporidium per liter. And I, have, I had five samples with protozoa and one sample of negative control. So no protozoa. And I... I choose to use these two kinds of waters to compare, to see if the kaolinite and acid and humic acid can interfere in the results or not. So again, I did the same thing, membrane filtration protocol, but now I did with warm twin because we already know that is better. Uh, immunomagnetic separation with dynabits, followed by Medifluor and DAPI, the same protocol. So I did four tests in the beginning and a five test and a last test here. I will explain. So the first test is the standard protocol, 100 microliters of dynabid and 100 microliters of acid, the standard protocol. The second test, I reduce by half the amount of dynabids, so 50 microliters of dynabid, and I kept the 
same amount of acid. The third test, I reduced again, so 25 microliters. And in the last test, no dynamites and no acid. So I got some results here that I will show you. But based on my results, I, I choose to do one more test. So I choose to duplicate the amount of acid and keep 100 microliters of dynabits. I will show you why. So here is the US EPA table. And what you need to know here is that the minimum acceptance criteria for cryptosporidium, for recovery of cryptosporidium, is 32. And for Georgia is eight, and for Georgia is eight. So, which means that we need to find at least 32 percent of cryptosporidium and eight percent of Georgia in a sample. And here we have my results. So, in the first test, with I think I have laser. Sorry. Yeah, now I have. So in the first test, with 100 microliters of dynabits and 100 microliters of acid, I got 13.5% of recovery rate for Georgia and 8 point, almost 9% for crypto. And followed by, in the second test, I got 66, 5 to 6%, 56%, and 6.5%. In the third test, with 25 microliters of beads and 100 microliters of, of acid, I got almost 20% for Georgia and almost 9% for crypto. And in the fourth test, with no beads and no acid, almost 17% and almost 7%. So what I want to show you is that here in the second test, when I use half of beads and the same amount of acid, I got the most recovery rate, the major recovery rate. And here, for Georgia, and here, when I doubled the amount of acid, I got the biggest one for cryptosporidium. So here, all of these tests, all of this four tests here uh, are enough for EPA, but no tests, no results are enough for cryptosporidium for EPA. We got good results for Georgia, but not that good for crypto. So during my test, I was wondering why we didn't get so, I mean, good results or results that are better than this. So, I tried to change a little bit the protocol, and I did all the protocol, all the steps, but I stopped before the dissociation. So I didn't put the acid. And I examined, and I, I put the beads, only the beads on the micro, to check if we can, I can see the microorganisms in the beads. And what I found is, when I didn't use dissociation, I got almost 60% of recovery for cryptospori for Georgia and 32%, uh, almost more than 32% for cryptosporidium. Which means that lots of cryptosporidium in Georgia are stocks on the beach. They and but these results are not enough for me also. Because, I mean, if I didn't use the dissociation method, all the protozoa should be stocked on the beads, but don't. So in another test, after the dissociation process, I examined the beads, only the beads, after three dissociations. And I saw that I, I saw Protozoa, Georgia and crypto is stocked on the beads. Even I was used acid and acid and acid three times. Sorry, I don't have photos because we have problems in our computer, so I lost all my photos, but trust me. So these two results means two things, I think. 
loss of protozoa during the process, and ineffective dissociation. We need to improve it, to improve the technique, right? So, summarize my results, almost all tests reached the, co the recovery parameters of USPA for Giardia. None of them reached the recovery parameters for crypto. No difference were observed in the results between challenge water and well water, so the kaolinite and humic acid makes no difference. And here, I think we have good news, because according to the USPA criteria, the option, the best option, the best cost benefits option, is the combination of 25% microliters of dynabits and 100 microliters of acid, which means a reduction of 75%. So instead of using 100 microliters of beads, we can use just 25. So if we have a kit for 50, now we have 400. Or no, 200. Yeah, sorry. But if you can remember, I will back here. I also got good results without Dynabits. So I got an enough recovery rate for Giardia, and not enough for crypto, but I mean, in the average, it's a good one. So tests without Dynabits should be considered at least for trial runs, not for validation runs, because we need to use AMS, but for trial runs to reduce costs, we can consider doing it without Dynabits. So our next steps, or my next steps, to try to improve and reduce more costs in this protocol, is try to dissolving the membrane and uh, chemical solvents, because I think we are losing lots of protozoa and uh, during the, the scrapping membrane procedure. Uh, I will do a careful analysis of the protocol. I'll go through step by step to check where we can lose, lose this, this protozoa and try to improve it. And I will compare, I will try to compare at least for trial runs again, not for validation runs. Low cost staining methods that we usually use for in a human parasitology laboratory for feces. We have different kinds of staining techniques that are very, very cheap. So I will try to use one of these techniques or two and compare with the immunofluorescence. So if we have the almost the same results. Maybe we can use it for trial runs and then use immunofluorescence only for validation runs. So this will reduce more costs. Thank you. Questions, please. Any doubts? How are you reducing costs but still guaranteeing value for money, uh, keeping the quality? Sorry? How are you reducing the costs, mm -hmm. but still guaranteeing value for money, so basically keeping the quality? Keeping the quality, yeah. I mean, I need to base my results on the USCPA. Sorry. Sorry. On the USCPA criteria. So we need to keep inside this gap. But for at least for now, we are guaranteed the quality because with the standard protocol, we got almost, this, almost the same results with the reduced protocol. So for now, at least, this is quality. So because we, we didn't achieve the, the US, US EPA criteria for crypto, so we need to improve it. But it is a second step of the protocol. But now, based on these results, for, for now, is quality. Okay. No more questions, I think. All right. Oh, oops. Oh. Oh. 
Hey, I just wanted to point out that this is a commercial reagent and it's very expensive. And it's not that we need to provide better quality results. We expected these to be good quality results according to US EPA and to the manufacturer. Uh, so we're trying to improve the, the method for our water, which is not perfectly clean. Uh, it's a challenge water, so she's trying to use it in a more complicated matrix. Uh, so our way to try and um, make it a better solution is test different protocols. So this is what Natalia was trying to do. So she's providing value by making it useful for us in the lab. So if you would like now, I can show you some Giorgia and crypto on the micro. So we can go down to another lab and we have a slide on the micro and you can see with your eyes. All right, I think there's no more questions. Uh, the session, it's over. It's over for now. And then you're going all together to the lab. All right? For me, see you tomorrow. Thank you.